Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. Welcome to our episode number two of the Inside Metal Show on T Radio V. I've got a great show planned today. A very thrown together show, and I really appreciate these two guys for uh, coming in last minute. My good friend, Mr. Bernie K, to the right of me. What's, What's up, happening? Bernie? What's happening? Hey, Bob. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. What's up to everybody out there? All right. Bernie K, of course, was in the groundbreaking all black hard rock heavy metal band Sound Barrier that uh, released uh, the debut album in 83, I believe, on MCA. That's right, 83. The first, one of the first hard rock bands of uh, in the LA scene after, of course, Van Halen that got uh, signed, uh, you know, before the Crews and the Rats and the uh, Black and Blues and uh, even before the Quiet Riot album. Uh, Sound Barrier were true groundbreakers long before Living Color and uh, they were um, a, a fantastic band. He also uh, ha- was in Total Eclipse. He fronted Total Eclipse after that. What was that, early 90s, 91? That uh, was 92. 92. Uh, 93, uh, A&M Mergage. That's right. Fantastic album, uh, Total Eclipse. Taboo A&M, right? Taboo. Yeah. Yeah. A uh, uh, cat named, uh, God, what is his name? I can see his face right now. <laughs> but this cat is the best friend of uh, Quincy Jones. Uh, he's uh, a guy that uh, actually uh, signed Bill Withers, Clarence Avant, that's his name. Mm. And Clarence is, uh, looked at us and said, hey, man, I think you guys have something. Uh, I don't know what it is, but I can feel it. And uh, he had a connection with A&M. So, um, you know, it was like a, a godsend on that one, and he just had the power to do it. I mean, he just, matter of fact, he just looked at us and said, well, what, is, what is it going to take for me to sign you? Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I could have told him a million dollars, and I think I would have gotten it. So, you know, <laughs> we were trying to be cool. Right place at right. the right time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to talk all about uh, Sound Barrier and, of course, Total Eclipse. We've got a whole hour show here. Let me introduce my second guest, Mr. Willie Bass. Texting away there. What's up there, Willie? I'm, I'm too cool tweeting. To like, I'm, 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 oh, I'm tweeting. Okay. I'm letting everybody know right, that we're well, going live I'll, now. I'll accept, I'll accept that. <laughs> <laughs> right now. Willie Bass, also a longtime hard rock metal man back in the day. Black Sheep. I remember seeing Black Sheep at the country club with a young guitar player named Paul Gilbert. I believe he was 17 oh, yeah. at the time. I was That's at right. that show. Great show, man. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, and I know you go back from the from the seventies. We're going to be talking about your history. We we used to do every Sunday night together over at Wong's Chinatown. Wow. Wow. So Wong. you know now we're really getting back there. There you go. That's a clip <laughs> that, that was, not many people That was in the late seventies, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, late seventies. Early eighties. Uh, yeah. Seventy eight through about eighty, we we, we, we right. ran that place upside down. Yeah. Um, dragging up amps up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> But it, it became a phenomenon, and I don't think Wong's expected it, but, you know, yeah. it was good. You know, for those <laughs> that don't know Madam Wong's, it was a nightclub back in the early se- or the late 70s into the early 80s. I guess there were two. There was Madam Wong's West yeah. and Madam Wong's Downtown. I never went to the downtown one, but I remember Really? That Madame was the Wong's. original OG yeah, downtown, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Chinatown. Never, yeah. You know, it was more, everyone knew it as more of kind of a new wave uh, uh, club, and in fact, in, in the movie right here going to give the plugs again to the inside metal <laughs> dvd both bernie and willie bass are featured in this uh, debut uh title uh the pioneers of la hard rock and metal see it right there there you go there's the poster that's what i'm talking about <laughs> there we go we're going we're yeah. hitting the theaters gentlemen you know that on the uh, 11th we're going we're uh, national on the theaters in fact we're going to go there. Yeah, we're that's gonna awesome it's awesome throw up some theater dates you know what why don't we throw up the, some of the theater dates and we might have a wait we might have a third person joining us is he coming in now we, we might have bobby pickett uh, from Detective. My hero. Yeah. One of my heroes. Uh, amazing. I remember that first Detective album when it mm. first came out. I heard One More Heartache on the radio. I thought it was Zeppelin. I'm going, yep. holy shit. Is yep. Zeppelin have a new song out? But uh, Bobby Pickett might be joining us. Oh, here we go. There's the tour dates. Thank you. We're going to scroll down. 
starting off in Austria, believe it or not, and then we got uh, several dates in the States. Uh, this is alphabetical, starting in Alabama. Look at that, no. Oh, that's going to be great. Yeah. These are all the, the uh, theaters. These are, we might be adding some more. So uh, people, just go to metalrockfilms.com and go to the theater dates, and we hope to be adding some more coming up. So uh, definitely check that out. Once again, metalrockfilms.com. And... Um, well, talk a little bit about what you got going on right now, Willie Bates. <laughs> I've been sworn to secrecy. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, I bring you on to promote your new you know, stuff, and, and now it's we like, can't talk about it's, it. It's huh? all, you know, it's always like that, man. It's there, you know, such big names that I can't mention who it is. You could give us a little hint, right? Uh, no. <laughs> man, <laughs> could really? cost me my job. Man. All right, well, well, we don't want that. But no, happen. I'm working with Alvin Taylor. Uh, Alvin's a drummer that was with um, Eric Burden. Oh yeah, the animal. And wow. uh, yeah, um, and uh, Alvin's played with George Harrison and Sly Stone. And I've heard of those guys. You know, played on a lot of Barry White stuff. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, it's phenomenal because when me and him get together, it's like the groove is on, you know, like deep pockets, deep fat pockets. Right and on. so, uh, so you know, I've been using him on pretty much everything I do lately. Wow. And uh, it's it's working out. It's really good. All right. Now, he he did some stuff on the your Money Grind album, didn't he? Or did he no, do some tracks? Okay. No, no. That was uh, Vito DeVito. Oh, okay. Right on. From Danmar Percussion Products. Yeah, and you had a lot of cats play on that, <laughs> that uh, solo record, right? That was uh, well, it was ma the main core of that, which uh, Croyle right. took us in, um, what was that studio over there on Lancashire and Chandler? God, I'm going blank on it. Everybody what, recorded one there. One. One, one, no, one, no, one. no. Um, uh, uh, I don't know the one you're talking about there. It's not like there anymore. It's yeah, a parking yeah. lot now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Warren, uh, Warren took us in there. Warren and, Croyle. Yes, oh, okay. Warren wow. Croyle. Okay, right on. Yeah, he took us in there. We recorded. He's the executive producer, by the way. I was about of, to say, that's the same cat. Man. This yeah. is the same, of uh, Inside Metal. And he's... Uh, so, people that don't know about Warren, he's got a long history with uh, in the recording studio. Uh, yeah. Music grinder. He, was, he worked with alongside Andy Johns, so... Uh, he's been uh, doing a lot of stuff in uh, uh, rock and roll and hard rock music, uh, you know, and then he got into the DVD business. So, I'm trying to think of the name of that studio, man. Everybody recorded there. Warlock. Uh, um, Doro Pesh. I think Van Halen. Um, I know the one you're talking it? about. So I, I, uh, Rick, Rick Rubin did a lot of stuff there. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Thing. I, I used to see him there. We're going to be heading into a break uh, real soon, but uh, before we do, talk about uh, the Nation Project real quick. Before we uh, lead oh, well, out of here, well, yeah, this is Bernie K. I was um, uh, recently, uh, probably pro for about a year now or more, been working with Alex Massey, mm. and uh, we've been using. Uh, we did about ten songs together in the bedroom, hanging out, you know, in the living room. He's played bass. We stole drums from the internet. He played guitar. I did all <laughs> vocals. We listened back and said, "Okay, those are pretty good. Let's 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 get somebody and let's do them." You know. All right. So, but he's in Europe right now doing his thing. But uh, you know, that's on hold right now. And bass played with us too. Willie played with us at a live gig. You know, we killed that. And, and then after that, he, Alex had to go back to Europe. So, that's on hold at this moment. Sean you know. Duncan from from. Oh uh, yeah, Sean Duncan played Odin. drums. Yeah. You know, DC4. And, and yeah, he's, yeah, Sean beats the hell out the drums, and everybody knows that. So, uh, it was it was a nice uh, push, and like you know, we can actually get time together again and really get something time to really mold. It, it's gonna be on. It would be on. <laughs> it, it would be. You know, we 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 would have a, a killer lineup. All so, right, we're gonna talk uh, more it. about Nation, Bernie K's current project. And we're going to try to squeeze what's coming out of uh, Willie Bass these days. He's going to, well, he's got a few things going on. We're going to be right back with you at the Inside Metal Show on T-Radio V. Hey, I'm Dean Kane, and you are watching T-Radio V. I'm watching it, too. Right now. Seriously. Perfect. <laughs> I'm Debbie Kay, professional poker player and host of the new poker show, The Flop, Thursdays at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on T-Radio V. 
Come play with me and dive into the world of poker, where each week I'll discuss the lives of grinders and nits with local rounders and celebrity guests. Who knows? I may even shuffle a scandal or two. If you want to know what's happening on the felt and learn a tip or two from the pros, I'll be dealing it to you weekly. So tune in to T-Radio V every Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Are you ready to get your grind on? T-Radio V. Radio and TV. You know what? Here, just watch for yourselves. What's happening? Is your main money B? Everett. <laughs> and celebs made quite a... I want my MB... <laughs> I'm gone in. And these are this week's... Oh, oh. Tune in next... Okay. Emphasis on... Mm. Listen up, bro. Relax. I'm not going on in. What's happening, everybody? Is your man Money Beef? Wait, where's the camera? Where am I looking? Hey, everyone. I'm Andy Dick. <laughs> What's up, y'all? It's Eddie Don. <laughs> what are you doing, baby? We rolling. Oh, s***. Why are so sad? I'm 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 Next Friday, Small doses. Five, five. <laughs> that's what my mother says about me. That's so sad. <laughs> Small doses. Oh, great. <laughs> Who is your audience? Men. No. <laughs> And that's it, folks. <laughs> All right, I'm Louis Lombardi. And I'm James Gutierrez. Bringing you Celebrity Bookie every Thursday starting September 4th at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Every NFL game picked by this man right here. Yep, we're going to make you rich. And fantasy stuff by me. Fantasy stuff by him. Fantasy football stuff. On where? On True Radio. I think that's TV Radio. No, it's T, T <laughs> it's Radio, T -Radio v. v. T Radio V on Radio com. And TV. T Radio V dot com, I think, is what they want. Tune in. Radio and TV on the internet. <laughs> Concept. It's the f it. T Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. All right, welcome back to the Inside Metal Show on T Radio V. I'm getting uh, I'm getting used to this uh, radio and TV thing, man. I'm, I'm starting to roll with this, Bernie. I think it's kind of cool. <laughs> I do too. We got my guests Bernie K and Willie Bass tweeting away, letting everybody know that we're going live, right? Oh yeah, yeah, live. that's right. Well, going back to Bernie K, where we left off. Um, it's been almost a year since uh, your drummer David passed. And last time we hung out uh, and uh, I, I saw you guys perform, uh, which was uh, just absolutely fantastic. You did a great uh, show, a benefit show for Dave, who, uh, who had passed uh, very soon after that show uh, from cancer. And uh, we did a, a fantastic benefit show that was put together at the uh, Paladinos. And you performed uh, probably the first time in what, 30 years with, with Spacey? Yeah. Spacey T. And yeah, we, we, we had to drag him on, but he made it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but um, I mean, it was, uh, it was, uh, if the funniest part was a real brief, quick story was uh, Dave was kind of weak. And uh, mm. I, I told him, man, I'm, I got a lot of people playing. Armored Saint came out and played. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, uh, the Duncan uh, Brothers like came DC out and played. Floor, yeah. Uh, Ann, Ann Bolin, Bolin right? uh, Bitch came out. I mean, you know, a bunch yeah. of people. But uh, you know, I told him, I said, man, listen, I'm gonna do three songs myself, and I got a, I got, I'm gonna get a drummer. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I'm gonna find a bass player. I'm gonna, I got Roy G Roy on guitar. Z, yeah, came out. And he says, and then he looks at me. He, he, he straight out looks at me and says, I want to play. And I was, <laughs> like, I was like, wait a minute, man. Yeah. You know, I don't want to push you, you know, yeah. push you to the limit. He says, nah, man, I want to play. So he gets his ace in the hole, Andre Berry, which was in the bass player for Tony totally Clips. Clips. And they're yeah. like, they were like brothers, man. Right. So, you know, and next thing I know is, is Dave on drums, Andre Berry, Roy Z, and me. Yeah. And, you know. I think we got a picture there. Could you throw up a picture of the reunion show under the uh, sound barrier file there? There we go. There's a picture from the reunion show. Cool. There's Dave on the left. Of course, Andre, the bassist from uh, Total Eclipse that did that show. And uh, Bernie, Spacey T, and of course, Roy Z. Yeah, Roy Z and Tribal Gypsy. Yeah. You know, so, and then uh, we did Rock Without the Road together. And yeah, that was like the, the song that was on MTV, you know, uh, that 
people uh, actually had the chance to see back song. in the day. Mm -hmm. And I had a, I had a, uh, I had a uh, YouTube chat with some guy who told me, hey man, you, you may not believe this, but I, I saw, your, saw your video and I couldn't believe it. He said, long time ago when you know he had VHF and UHF you know <laughs> and, and he tells me he sat there the whole day waiting for it to, waiting for it to show again and it never played so he said I went out the next day and bought it so alright well cool. you know what guys you don't cool. have to go on YouTube because we're going to show a little clip from the Rock Without the Roll video right now I believe we got it queued up there Sound Barrier this was your first video you did on the debut MCA uh, release yeah uh, um, and that was uh, what was the, the name of the album uh, Total, Total Control. Control Total Control yeah and this right. was us we did this on our own because okay. uh, we had no promotion from uh, MCA right well let's let's uh, play a little excerpt from the uh, video here <laughs> I was the black guy doing rock hanging out with these guys and you know I don't think they hang used to hang out with a lot of black people but you know, it was like, it was, for me, it was about the music, man. To me, I was just hearing it as, as a chance to do something new musically. You know, not like, okay, four chord song where, you know, okay, I, I get it. No. Hey, let's do a lick here. Let's do some chord progression. We, we were like a new drawing board. Right. And we had no rules. We had no, you know, we didn't have to follow anybody. So we could create our own thing. I figured, wow. He was doing that in the 60s, man, where if I think I got it bad, he really had it bad because people really, really shunned what he was doing. But I guess he was in that uh, machine of power where they weren't going to let anything happen to him or anything, obviously, you know, but it, he managed to get around, you know what I mean? With, with no, no problems hardly that we heard of that anybody's like as far as racial problems, you know. So I figured, wow, if he can do that. Let's just see what happens, you know? So for me, it was a thing of like, just trying to um, see if we can impress people with our talent. And it wasn't necessarily at the time about our co the color of our skin, but it was. But we tried to at first just kind of come on the scene like, uh, if you accept us, you know, we could show you that we think we could do this too, as opposed to like, like years later, like a band like Body Count or something that would come out and like, hey, motherfuckers, we taking over, da 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 da. And I mean, we didn't, we, you know, we felt like that, but we were trying to do it like, let the music do the talking. We would get this from people, man, from a white person, you guys are black, why are you playing rock and roll? We get this from a black person, man, you guys are black, why are you playing rock and roll? And we go like, what's wrong with both of you? <laughs> Blacks were involved in rock and roll. Uh, why don't either one of you know that? It ended up being a really cool thing with musicians, man, because back behind the stage, all that race stuff, the thought was even gone. We were we had a community going in, you know, and it was and and everybody pushed each other forward. That we I think we accomplished what we were trying to do as far as letting everybody know, hey man, it's not about your color when it comes to rocking out, dude. All your right. attitude is what it's about. There you go. That was yeah. actually a clip from the debut the new you got an exclusive awesome. there people that was yeah. awesome. <laughs> total yeah. exclusive very surprising that was right on time yeah. yeah here's here's the movie the pioneers of la hard rock and metal of course featuring willie bass and my man bernie k and of course that was spacey t your guitar player from sound barrier who That's we're right. talking about and uh, that was a little segment uh you know when we were talking about uh the uh, uh black musicians playing hard rock music right, right. and kind of the struggles you guys uh, had to go through and we'll kind of lead into that and then we'll kind of get back to the whole uh, sound barrier thing but um you guys i mean you played uh, obviously you were one of the first and, and one of the renowned i mean sound uh, signed to a major label mca and you came right in the la circuit man i mean i saw the first i saw you guys open up for Motley Crue and Rat at a small club in Anaheim called Radio City. I miss <laughs> you guys when you played with Metallica at the Troubadour when they opened for you, but I did see you guys play with, uh, again, with, I believe, Steeler and Rat, at, either at the Troubadour or the Whiskey. Uh, a did. bunch of those. Steeler, we, uh, Whiskey, we, dude, our debut a, was blue, Black and Blue. Gotcha. What about Ingve at the Palladium, Ingve dude? At the yeah. Palladium. That was unbelievable. No, it was crazy, man, because, I mean, <laughs> you know, the thing was, everybody knew beyond being black we were playing mm -hmm. yeah we were bringing something that was that was good fresh absolutely different and and the fact that we were black just kind of like took everybody like hold on let me 
Let me re let me rethink this. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, the rock and roll fans, the hard rock metal fans, they didn't care. They loved it. They just wanted to hear great music. They didn't care. They were behind it. And uh, as we uh, you talk in the movie and, and part two of the movie, both you and Spacey are in a part two, which is going to lead into more from like 83 onward. Um, you know, you talk about how the industry just really didn't get the band. And that's where I think what the problem was with both Sound Barrier and Total Eclipse, both oh, fantastic albums. And absolutely. you guys were really, uh, you know, the, fir the first album had a lot of great funk grooves. You were mixing all sorts of different kind of music. But, you know, you were definitely, uh, especially into the uh, second album, uh, Born to Rock and, and the third, um, definitely, you know, you, you got a little bit more into that Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, a little bit more British metal. That was sounding. Spacey T because he was mm -hmm. listening to that a lot. Right. So it kind of, it kind of like melded in, mm. and you know, then I had to take it and still trying to make it soulful. Yeah. You know the way I Which would do did. my thing. Yeah. You know. You know, which yeah. I thought we did okay. Uh, Raging Heart, that's one of my favorite songs. Oh, yeah, you yeah. know, that song is crazy. You know, Raging Heart, you know. So those, keeping it like, you, you'd think I would start off screaming because the song was so intense. Right. But I, I intentionally took it down and let the music be like all this crazy sound. I and I'm like you. creeping on you. And right. then finally I, I reach this apex, you know, and yeah. get to you at the end. So it, w it was fun to, you know, to musically try to come up with something. It was, it was really a challenge, yeah, you know, yeah. to to create something against that wa that wall of sound. You know? Right, right. Well, definitely as far as our, all the black rock or hard rock bands, you know, bands that followed like Living Color and mm -hmm. a lot of bands in the 90s, you know, you go with a fishbone or whatever that had, you know, some hard rock elements. I mean, you guys really were, uh, you know, especially on those albums, were a, truly a metal band. I mean, very traditional classic metal and it was it was killer, man. But that was just, the key. That yeah. was the key because, we, you know, uh, Stanley was a killer bass player oh, and yeah. he could pop all day if mm -hmm. he wanted to. But we say, don't pop because we don't <laughs> want it to be somebody say, oh, you're they're a funk band, mm -hmm. a funk rock band. We wanted to every, let everybody know this was a metal band. Right. I mean, that was the music. That was the genre, you know. Mm -hmm. And, of course, every once in a while he popped just to keep us, you know, to let them know that, hey, we could do what we want to. Mm -hmm. we, could, we can go here if we want to. You know, we can go wherever we want to. Right. But we were intentionally made it a hard rock band yeah. and metal hard to, to where no one could say, oh, these guys are trying to play hard rock. Check them out. Right, right. It's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> well, so I don't know where, it, how, yeah. how we lost the transition anyway because it's like R&B had a child and it was a, it was a, a wild child called rock and roll. Yep, you know, right. it was the black guys that started the shit, but somehow it got convoluted and lost, you know, there in the, in the yeah, 60s. Why you know, is that? I mean, Pat said, Boone was covering Little Richard songs, <laughs> man, yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So, well, you know, you thought after, uh, particularly after Hendrix came out and made it, you know, went to England and, and, and got known as this, you know, legendary guitar But I'm hero, talking about before was. that, way before yeah, that. Yeah, even that, you know, but, you, know you, you would think uh, uh, that, and, w and what led into Hendrix and stuff, that there would have been a slew of black hard rock musicians coming out, and there really wasn't until... Sound Barrier really came out. Um, it just it, it well, well. You remember that you heard about the band called Death. Right? Yeah, yeah. I saw that and, documentary, and, and I had no idea about that. Mm. And see that that leads back to probably the reason why we didn't know the business. Uh, yeah. The business. Yeah. The people who didn't promote this kind of thing. I mean, I, we literally sat in an MCA uh, 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 meeting mm -hmm. with marketing people, and they kept wondering how can we market these guys, and we're sitting there going like a rock band. As a rock band, <laughs> I hate when they do that. You know, I always, I always the the publicists or whatever, they always would go, "Well, we can get you in Ebony and Jet Magazine." It's like, dude, they yeah. they never gave me two lines in Jet Magazine. You know, well, like, we're gonna what, get to a Black Sheep. We're crazy. gonna have to take a little break here. We're gonna get into uh, Willie. What Willie's got going on with Black Sheep? We're gonna get into more. Sound Barrier and Total Eclipse, and maybe Bobby Pickett will join us cool. on this next segment. We'll see. You are tuned into the Inside Metal Show on T Radio V. Hi, I'm Sheriff John Bennell. You're watching T Radio, radio and TV. What? <laughs> uh, uh, no, it's perfect. Yeah, no, it's Why are you asking me to do this after 12 drinks? <laughs> <laughs> 
Hi, I'm Bob Nelbandian, and be sure to watch my show, Inside Metal, which airs live every Tuesday from 3 to 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, right here on T Radio V. I'm going to be bringing in the greatest heavy metal artist live right here in the studio. Once again, every week at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, every Tuesday, right here at T Radio V.com, Radio in TV. Hi, I'm Holly, and this is Michael. We're on Love Life on T-Radio V every day. No! no. <laughs> every Tuesday. Tuesdays. Every day I try to get her to have a love life. <laughs> but every Tuesday, where you can watch us and hear us, only one place. Only hear him, though. 5 p.m. Pacific time, T-Radio V. We're going to talk about love, relationships, sex? intimacy. There'll be some sex, but not... Between us. No, I don't have sex with him. Not often. You're single, we're gonna share with you what to do if you just want booty calls or be in a relationship. Oh, you know you oh, like booty calls. I do. <laughs> What's it like to be in a relationship? We always say you have to be a strong me before you can be a great we. One place, right here, Tuesdays, 5 p.m. Pacific, only on T Radio V, right? Yep. Cool. Right, I'm Louis Lombardi. And I'm James Gutierrez. Bring you Celebrity Bookie every Thursday starting September 4th at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Every NFL game picked by this man right here. Yep, we'll make you rich. And fantasy stuff by me. Fantasy stuff by him. Fantasy football stuff. On where? On True Radio. I think that's TV Radio. No, it's T, T <laughs> it's Radio, T -Radio v. v. T Radio V on Radio com. And TV. T Radio v. V. com, I think, is what they want. Tune in. Radio and TV on the internet. <laughs> Concept. It's the f it. Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. All right. There you go, little total eclipse. Remember that, Bernie? Oh, my God, yes. Great tune. Great album, man. Oh, Love man. Yeah, well, you know, I wrote that song for the band because as long as it feels right, everything's going to be all right, you know? All right. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, before we get into Willie, let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, Total Eclipse. That was your band you had after uh, Sound Barrier. And again, an all fantastic all black uh, hard rock band. A uh, little, little, lot of great funk grooves on there. You got Andre on bass. Andre Barry. And of course, Dave Brown came over from Sound Barrier and uh, uh, remained with you on the drums. And right. of course, Victor Johnson. Victor Johnson who, from the Bus Boys. The Bus Boys, who a lot of people know now is in uh, the Sammy Hager's band. Sammy, for Sammy. 15 years yeah. now. Yeah. Wow. You Fantastic know, guitar the Wall Burritos, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, Vic, uh, Vic played on uh, actually the second album as well. Right. He played on uh, uh, the uh, Born, oh, Born oh, to Rock right. album. Oh, that's right. He did some, so him and uh, yeah. Spacey both split. Yeah, Raging Heart was three-part harmony that's hammer right. ons and that was the bass, and Spacey and Vic doing three-part harmony. Yeah, again, groundbreaking stuff. Yeah, Vic was a monster. He's still a monster guitar player. Yeah. And uh, that album, um, uh, you know, it's funny. When that album came out, it was like right when Nirvana started mm. doing the grunge and everything right. started being a little bit more grungier. It's a good good album, but it wasn't timely with, with what was happening at that point. Great mm -hmm. rock album, but uh, you know, it just. And you uh, did a video different. for that, a single, which which should have been huge. Fire in the rain, what a great <sighs> song! And didn't yeah. someone, uh, the uh, one of the guys, uh, that the director from Nirvana or something, do that? The video? director from Nirvana, who did Nirvana, all of Nirvana's video, shot that. We shot it up in Seattle. Wow. You know, we spent two days up there hanging out. And, Let's see uh, if we have that one queued up. Do you have Fire in the Rain video? It will be from one of the, uh, the links. Uh, go, go in about a minute twenty uh, about a minute twenty in if you could get that one uh, yeah, that was going. A good that video. Was a it looked really, really cool well. Video. He shot very, it very, very well. Very good uh, good. video. And I don't know if we could pull that up. We'll see if, if, if not uh, uh, you guys could find it somewhere. Too. Right, there we go.
All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 1992. 1992 right? or 93, right there. Smoking. <laughs> Smoking hot. <laughs> Great wow. video, man. And they didn't, I don't, uh, that's a hard video to find. I mean, I don't, I remember seeing that a couple times. And I don't think it was on MTV. It was some other video shows. Well, that they MTV had on the played time. it. Once or twice, but once again, we didn't get the marketing push. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you got to have those. The people have to be behind it and, and, and in the ear, and if they have to pay a couple of bucks, right. that's what they do. You know, and That whole album just kicks ass, man. Both the, All the Sound Bearer albums and the uh, Total Eclipse uh, uh, debut. Thank you, uh, thank fantastic, you, Bob. Fantastic, fantastic stuff. I did a lot of work on the music. Now, let's, go to, <laughs> let's go to my man here, Mr. Willie Bass. Hey, hey. So uh, talk a little bit about uh, some of the stuff you used to do back in the day. I know you've had just about every major musician either jam with you or in your band. <laughs> yeah. Let's get the uh, Black Sheep, the old Black Sheep photo up from the uh, Black Sheep photo folder. Man, we'll see true. if you recognize, you recognize that. Oh, that, that, oh that my young, God, uh, that's Slash. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> that was Slash playing in a Willie's uh, band, Black Sheep. Now, he was just after Paul Gilbert or before? He p replaced Paul Gilbert. Oh, he replaced Paul Gilbert. Well, so, well actually, it was Kurt James and then okay, Slash. Right. And Kurt James replaced Ingve in Steeler. Right. And uh, then, uh, now, uh, tell me, because I, I remember <laughs> Slash was known kind of as a shredder back then. He and, was definitely a shredder, and he, he had no problem playing all the Paul Gilbert licks, you know, the laser jet printer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because Paul, Paul, one of Paul's major influences was uh, Al D'Amelioa. Sure. So, you know, we're talking shred, shred city. Mm. <laughs> but it's you don't hear Slash do that kind of stuff these days, really. I mean, it's fantastic no, well, guitar player. You, you hear he that went air, more to, towards there, yeah. the blues thing Absolutely. when he went to uh, GNR. Right, right. Yeah. Cool. Well, let's talk about some of those early shows. I mean, you guys did. Uh, you played everywhere. I know you had a, a rehearsal studio, which everyone and their mother used to rehearse. Well, back Sound, Bar uh, Sound Barrier and, and Totally Cliffs rehearsed at my right. place. <laughs> And, we used uh, to live there. Yeah, <laughs> and so did uh, uh, Betsy Bitch right. and uh, Jeff Scott Soto. I mean, uh, Leather Wolf. Yeah, yeah, Leather Wolf for a long. They like moved in too. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's see who else. Uh, 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 you know that um, they did that uh, chain, chain, chain. Oh, uh, Little Caesar. Little Caesar. Yeah, yeah, yeah man, yeah. those guys. Lauren, I've known Lauren since I worked as lighting director at the Rock Corporation. Yeah, you were talking a little <laughs> bit about that in this movie here, Inside Metal Pioneers of L.A. Hard Rock and Metal. You were talking about seeing Van Halen as a cover band when yeah. you were the lighting guy over at the Rock Corporation yeah, yeah. back in the day. And you had some pretty funny stories you told about that, <laughs> which is really cool. Uh, some great stories uh, from Willie and Bernie, of course. Uh, you saw some exclusive clips earlier. So uh, that, you know... You can see all that and much more three-hour, two-DVD set. Uh, like I said, it's coming to the theaters, and it'll be out on DVD the first of the new year. And we're doing a big party. I think uh, we might even have an invite. We'll, we'll show to you. Since all you T-Radio V people are exclusive, if you call in this number and you say T-Radio V, we'll get you into our party on Thursday, our L.A. premiere. There it is. If you could find the number on the screen, pause it, send it. Email it to that address and say, you saw us on T-Radio V. We'll get you on the guest list. How about that? Huh? Cool. Very cool. That is cool. So uh, talk about, now, now I know you mentioned um, <laughs> Madame Wong's. Now you played yeah. with, uh, I mean, you played, didn't you play with like the police and uh, well, uh, the uh, you know bus boys you mentioned and psychedelic furs a lot of kind of oh weird yeah the, the motels and yeah. all of that you know it, they, it was she had a knack for cross marketing you know genres mm -hmm. like it didn't matter we would you know we would we were, I was more hard rock metal right but she would put me on shows with you know psychedelic furs or. Plimso. The, yeah, the plimp. <laughs> <laughs> you know, which uh, was cool, you know, because, you know, we knew what we were doing, and sure. it definitely was not New Wave. Well, it did mix <laughs> back then, and, and you know, it, and, in the uh, DVD, a lot of the bands talk about it. When punk and New Wave came in to the Starwood and to the, the Whiskey, they were starting to mix genres, but then it kind of came separate. But you're right, as far as uh, mixing genres, um, uh, Esther really... Yeah, because that was more of the new wave club. Uh, yeah, and you didn't see too many of the rock bands switching over there. But you were, you know, you were, and I know a sound bear do quite a few shows out there. Yeah, we were. We were actually 
You started as you really got like a, from a, a there, new right? wave type band. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Spacey talks about yeah, that. I we can't imagine that. But <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. We even had a song called New Age Ladies. So, I mean, you know, we were way into, we were into uh, the Pretenders. Mm. Cool. So it wasn't quite very light. It had a, uh, we were dropping beats. Right. You know, and we were always known for that drop. We playing stuff in 7454. You know, so yeah, that was, we started like that and then we just progressively got heavier. Mm. Right on, right on. Yeah, so I think I was a little more blues based back then right. in, that, in that era. era but now you go it's way always back. hard, though. You, when you came out to L.A. in the 70s, you started playing with Buddy Miles. Buddy from, Miles. Of course, the Band yeah. of Gypsies. Yeah. I mean, that must have been it's, an it's incredible really, experience. You know, it's, my life has been like that. I just kind of fell in with, with my heroes, you know. Wow. Because uh, I worked with Andy Johns when I was like 19. Right and was just following him around by his coattail and finding out what mics he used on what and mm -hmm. how he got those drums. Because that, you know, well, you when the Levy Breaks was like the baddest drum sound in the business, you know what I mean? It was just like, oh my God, this is the guy that engineered Stairway to Heaven, you know? Yeah. And so I learned a lot from Andy and, uh, you know, the guy that owned the studio was Gary Kilgren. He uh, uh, invented stereo phasing and you know, you right. heard the first the Jimi line, Hendrix yeah. album, so are you experienced? Sure. That was, uh, Gary was a co-producer on that album. Mm. And Andy was the second engineer on that album. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it was like a trip, Was it Andy man. or was it Glenn? Glenn Johns. No, like Andy. Andy. Glenn, okay. Glenn was doing the Who all the time. Right, right, and, right. And he couldn't, he couldn't squeeze right. that one in there. He's like, well, there's this chap coming over from America called uh, Hendrix. And <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> you, <laughs> so... You know, I mean, Andy used to tell me stories about sitting with Hendrix, and, and after everybody left, Jimmy would replace a lot of the parts, you know, and Andy would go home and get his bass. Because Andy was a bass player, wow. you know, and uh, Jimmy would replace the bass parts. and yeah. You know, like, like on, on a, um, six, if six was nine, or, oh, yeah. you know, Great. you can hear that bass. That's, that's more of a guitar player playing that so bass like that. Bass. Yes. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> it's like Ingve, you know, right. I mean. It's he crazy. Plays a lot of the bass on his album. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Good so stuff. it was like uh, going to college or something, you mm -hmm. know. Well, you know, it seems like a lot of these bands, going back to Hendrix, uh, really broke in Europe. Uh, you know, I mean, of course, Hendrix went to England. A lot mm -hmm. of the, uh, uh, and I know Soundberry had such a big following in Europe, and I always wondered why you, the label never sent you to Europe, because I know Karan So did Armored Saint, Shock. dude. Armored sure. Saint can't even walk down the street in Europe. Yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, all those bands, but... But uh, it seemed they were very open to the, the, the black musicians, where in the States it was more kind of treated as like a novelty thing. But in, right. in Europe, right. I mean, they just took right on to you guys. And, uh, but that was our you know, mistake. You look at bands like Fishbone, you know, all these other bands. That they live do, off of that. Yeah, Mother's Finest. They're yeah. huge out there. Nobody yeah. really knows them out here. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Anyway, we're going to uh, take <laughs> our final break, and uh, we're going to come back with... Uh, Willie Bass and Bernie K, and we're going to do, I think, uh, we're time to run the contest coming up next. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and do the contest. Cool. So, uh, we, we like got, contests. This is going to be a good one. So, T Radio V, the Inside Metal Show. Inside Metal. We'll be back real soon. <laughs> Yo, what's up, what's up? This is Too Short, and you're watching T-Radio B. Join Dave Navarro and friends for Dark Matter, Wednesdays at 9 p.m. on T-Radio V. Right, Dave Navarro here, Dark Matter Radio, T-Radio V.com. The universe is vast, enormous, huge, full of stars, planets, and matter. Some of the matter is so dense, that not even light escapes. Get on the mic, get, get on the mic, get, get on the mic, get on the mic, Frank! Pardon me, sir, pardon my reach. <laughs> See, and you guys were worried. I think this is going great. <laughs> pardon my reach? Get the f*** away from me, dude! You are really beautiful. Oh, Thanks, you guys. He's one of the most beautiful people I've ever known. This is pretty much every week. He brings in a guest that tells him how beautiful he is. Pardon my reach? If you have to reach over me, then don't do it. He is the straightest <laughs> gay guy I know. Dave Navarro signing off. Dark Matter. Thank Good you night. for listening. Bye. <laughs> 
Dark Matter with Dave Navarro, Wednesdays at 9 p.m. on T Radio V. Hi, this is Slim Jim Phantom, and you got the big beat. We're going to take this music into the 22nd century. We deal exclusively in rockabilly music. Elvis Presley, Jerry Lee Lewis, Carl Perkins, Chuck Berry, Little Richard, Richie Valens, Wanda Jackson, Janice Martin, the Everly Brothers, Johnny Cash, and everybody else. Thank you so much for supporting the Big Beat here on T Radio V. the Inside Metal Show on T Radio V. Got my guest, Mr. Bernie K. What's up, what's up? Sound Barrier, Total Eclipse, and his new band, Nation. And, of course, Willie Bass. And that was some little bit of Willie Bass, some newer stuff that you recorded, huh? Was that? Yeah, well, that was uh, what when the, <laughs> I was a realtor, and the bottom dropped out of real estate, and I looked in my, uh, my catalog. I had 42 songs recorded, so... You, uh, you know, we had to put out, start putting out records again. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool, cool. You know, away went the Bentley, away went all the Ferraris, and uh, back to music. Yeah, now which was really cool because you know, I, I kind of had semi-retired. Yeah, and, you were living in Texas for a little while, right? Dallas, well, uh, yeah, yeah. You weren't living; yeah. you were there. <laughs> <laughs> Texas, Texas has always been good to me, though, you know. Right on, man. Well, it's good good to have you back in L.A. And uh, we're going to get into the contest real quick. Uh, let's just show a couple of the old uh, Sound Barrier uh, photos. I think he's got something, uh, the uh, Sound Barrier photo file lined up here. Oh, boy. Before we get into this contest. There's the band. That's the band I remember, man. The you truth. guys uh. always had the uh, stylish. You guys came out with, you know, before the whole stylish 80s you know rock metal thing came out the fashion you guys had your own costumes you always had that unit you just you played and looked totally pro when you guys came out it was just like forget about it there you are with mr david lee roth david lee roth that's behind <laughs> stage at uh ingve momsting at the palladium, the palladium. Oh, that's yeah. what it was that was a great show. dave says i've heard a lot about you guys <laughs> <laughs> I said, what's up, Dave? He said, let's take a picture. Oh, cool. And there, there it was. And there, look who's in the back of that picture. You oh, look, look who's in the back of that picture. Well, that's, that's, uh, that's the, the uh, metal man himself. That's at the country the club. The metal god. Yeah, metal he god. came out to the country club. That's yeah. at the country club. He and uh, Glenn Tipton was uh, hanging out that night. There, I see cool. everyone was coming out to check out Sound Barrier back in the day. There's there the is. album. Yeah, Sound Barrier the... totally clear. If you could get your hand on that, a true rarity. Oh yeah, indeed. Yeah, you, you did, guys did and that at, at the record plant, the right? The record plant. Yeah, yeah. 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 L.A. Record, yeah. record plant. Record right? plant. L.A. Yeah. And this was the benefit show almost one year ago. Almost one year ago for Dave. <laughs> All right, you guys ready? You guys ready? I, you know what? Last uh, we we started this, you know, my debut episode with John Bush. I yeah, I saw, and we did like a little contest that we called Betty's Garage. <laughs> and should be to his mom because his mom used to always let us listen to old records back in the oh, day. Very cool. We used wow. to go hang out and play some old classic rock and metal. So I guess we'll continue to call it Betty's Garage. It sounds cool. Good. It's a catchy name. I'm sure John won't mind. So uh, we're going to get into the first track. What, what I've done just real quick before we get into it. Um, I didn't do a lot of vocal tracks. We did since uh, Mr. Willie here is a bass player. We did a few bass licks, a few guitar solos, about <laughs> oh 30 seconds or so of each song. And uh, we'll give you guys a chance to uh, see uh, test your metal, your hardcore, <laughs> classic metal knowledge. It's going to be so, on uh, him. <laughs> all right. Should we, uh, should we begin here? Let's go. Song numero uno. Speaking of bass grooves. Clock is 
ticking. <laughs> uh, come on. You're a bass player, Willie. I uh, never heard that one. <laughs> uh, dude, that's a rarity. That is That came actually before... Queen did the game record with uh, Another One Bites, Bites the Dust. Us, yeah. That song should have been huge. That was the original bass groove. That is wow. a gentleman by the name of Pete Agnew on bass. Nazareth. <laughs> cool. From the, uh, uh, playing the game album. Oh, I like the way that way with it came into vocals. Oh, may, whoa, maybe I did uh, put the, uh, go ahead, turn, take uh, turn that off. Maybe I did play the whole tracks on that. Uh, okay, we'll go with the next song. I think that should be an excerpt, hopefully. Yeah, nice one. I got it fell in. Here we go. All right, here's a new one for you. Deep Purple, Highway yeah. Star. Yeah, there you Come go. on now. Come on. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> number, number three. You should know this, Bernie. We talked about this. Band. Come on, your guitarist played with this band. Really? Can't be Sammy. <laughs> what are you thinking about? Your, your other guitar player, Spacey T. He played with this band? Yeah. This can't be Fishball. No. Oh, come on, man. I don't even know who it is, man. Oh, come on. We, we were just talking about them earlier. <laughs> 70s man Tom Warman produced the album. Never did anything here, but again, huge in Europe. Wow. Mother's Finest. Spacey T played was, on that? No, he didn't play on that. He played oh, in the band. Yeah. I was about to say. <laughs> was, okay. We got a couple minutes left. So let's go with the uh, fourth <laughs> that song. That didn't sound like here. Spacey at all. <laughs> no, that was one of their 70s tracks. Two black rockers in this band. That, that's Mother's Finest, right? No. No? It was a project they, they did. That must be Doug Pinnock right there. No, it just sounds like Doug. Yeah, at the beginning sound like Doug. Like <laughs> yeah. I'm done. It's a project called Nickelback. Bernard Fowler. Oh no! And, uh, oh, Steve no. Salas. Oh my yeah. God! Nickel, that's... nickel bag, not nickel bag. Yeah, no, nickel, nickel bag. bag. Yeah, yeah, Steve, Steve Salas. Salas. <laughs> Steve Salas and uh, Bernard. That's a great album wow. if you could find that. Cool. Uh, nickel you got bag. us good, man. Yeah, good. We should have known. <laughs> <laughs> we should have known. I, I thought at least that what you guys would get. Now we have to do more research. All right, let's go uh, next song. Irish guitarist, legendary Irish guitarist. <laughs> oh man, you're disappointing me, gentlemen. Well, man. That is Rory Gallagher from the Top Priority album. Okay. So I'm called Follow Me. <laughs> <laughs> You know, good, we're like, good we're plan. We're ahead but... of us on knowing you every time. All we're right. Like, out here, we're like, it's all right, it's all right. So that right, was rocking, so but I never yeah. knew what he did. I know of him, but I never heard, that's never a, know what he did. That's what one of his rocking out. Can you play a Miles that. Davis song? I might <laughs> can figure it out. <laughs> Freddie Hubbard. You, you'll figure out this next one. Let's Some go to the next players. song here. <laughs> Pat, Pat Travers. Yeah, there you go. Well, snorting whiskey and drinking cocaine. He's Pat un, so underrated, man. Oh, you amazing. Know. And Pat Thrall on guitar. And of course, oh, yeah. Tommy Aldridge on Pat drums. Yeah. Mars and, and with Mars, Mars on Mars bass, dude. Oh, that guy's a monster. Well, that was a super <laughs> great, man. That was an amazing band. Yeah, All right. New song. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, we're done? 
Oh, is Tom up already? Oh, oh, oh man, that's it. That ends the show. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for it. You know what? I, I, so I wasn't pro- watching appropriate that song. Yeah. Is, which side are you on? There you <laughs> go. <laughs> who, side get, are does you anyone on? know who this is? <laughs> it's me. I know. <laughs> That guy. You got it. Yeah, you got another one right. All right. Thanks again for tuning in to T Radio V, the Inside Metal Show. Be sure to check out the DVD, Inside Metal Pioneers of L.A. Hard Rock and Metal. Coming to a theater near you, go to metalrockfilms.com. Check out all the theater dates. And uh, we'll see you next week with our guest, Don Dawkin. Yeah. Thanks for tuning right, in. Don. Willie Bass, Bernie K. Bernie K, what's up? Peace out. All right. The rain of lies and deception It's only to the fool You are watching T-Radio V Radio and TV